Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Please remember to like and subscribe. Now today I will be doing part 2 of my video on vectors. We will be looking at addition and subtraction of vectors. But before you watch part 2, please go back and watch part 1. So let us start by looking at two free vectors. So what if we have u equal the vector 2, 3 and v equal the vector negative 6, 4. What we want to examine is u plus v. What happens or what will the result be? Now before we add them or before we attempt to do it algebraically, we're going to go to the graph paper and look at the graphical aspect of these two vectors. Okay, so we're going to start by representing each vector. My first vector v is 2, 3. So let us just choose a random place to put it. So here we go. We're going to go two places to the right. So that's 1, 2, and three places upward. 1, 2, 3. Now, vector v is negative 6, 4. So let us choose a random place as well. So it means we're going six places to the left. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And now for this particular aspect, we don't need a Cartesian plane. So we're going to remove it so we have enough space to combine these two vectors. Let me take vector u and put it in a position where I can easily join it to vector v. So I'm going to pull it down somewhere. So there is vector u. Now I want to add vector v to vector u. So at the tip of vector v, of vector u, I'm going to put vector v. There we go. So that is how we combine both vectors graphically. Now we're going to draw a vector that shows the resultant because we're going from this point here where u started up to this point here where v has ended. My resultant vector will start here. And it goes up to the tip here where v has ended. That is my resultant vector, which is in this case we're calling that vector w. Now I'm going to rep remove points f and e because we don't need them for this particular scenario. Counting off the resultant vector, which is w here, we notice we would have gone 1, 2, well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 places to the left, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7 and 7 places up. So my resultant vector here is negative 4, 7. And if you look at the far left hand corner, vector u was equal to 2, 3. And vector v was negative 6, 4. And my resultant vector here is negative 4, 7. So we realize that we can actually work this out algebraically by looking at what happens here on the graph. Now let us look at the vector again. So we said 1, 2, 3, 4. That's four places to the left. So that's negative four and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and seven places upward. So when we add these two vectors, what it seems as if we're doing is adding the corresponding components. Because if you look at the far left here, two plus negative six would give me negative four, and three plus four here would give me seven. So let us go to the algebraic aspect and see if it does work. So here now we could say u plus v would imply 2, 3 plus negative 6, 4. And as you saw from the graph, what really happens is that we add the corresponding components. So we have 2 plus negative 6 would give me negative 4. And 3 plus 4 would give me 7. And that would be my answer when I combine u plus v with addition. We want to now consider the subtraction of these two vectors, u minus v. So u minus v. But we know by laws of algebra, we can actually rewrite this as u plus negative v. And we know what happens when we negate a vector. When we negate a vector, it means that we change the direction of the vector. So it's going in the opposite direction. So technically speaking here, I'm going to have u, which is actually 2, 3, plus negative v. So I'm going to have negative 
that's minus 6, 4. Now, when I negate this vector, it's going to become, so I'm going to have 2, 3, plus negating this vector or changing this vector will change each component. So the negative 6 will become positive 6, and my positive 4 becomes negative 4. And of course, we found out that when we add vectors, we add the corresponding components. So in this case, the result is going to be 2 plus 6, and that is 8, and 3 plus negative 4, and that would give me negative 1. But we want to see if this is correct. So let us go to the graph and look at it. In my GeoGebra software, we already have vector u and vector v. I want the negative of vector v. And you know, whenever we negate, negate a vector, we negate the individual component. So over here on the left, vector v is negative 6, 4. So when I negate vector v, it's going to become 6, negative 4. So let us go. What does that mean? So let us choose a random point to start. So we start here. Now the negative of this would indicate that I'm going 6 places to the right now. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we are going 4 places down instead of upwards. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So that is vector w, which is the negative of vector v. All right. Let us remove the unnecessary points here. Now, let us now combine vector w, which is the negative of vector v, with vector u. And bear in mind, we say we're going to put it where vector u ends, or at the tip of vector u. So let's move it up here. Good. So we have u minus v. And in this case, we are using the negative of v, which is w. So we have negative v over here, which is indicated by vector w, which we combine with vector u. Let us look at the resultant vector here. So starting here, which is where u started, and ending out here, which is the tip. Now we're going to change the color so we can have a better view of it. Let us count it off. So I would have gone 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 8 places to the right and 1 place down. As you can see over here on the far left, the resultant is vector A, which is 8 minus 1. So we get the same answer when we calculated it algebraically. We are going to look at how we represent vectors, including addition and subtraction that involves um, position vectors and displacement vectors. Now, on the Cartesian plane, we're going to start by just putting two random points. So I'm going to put a point right here at negative 5, 3, and I'm going to put a point here at 4, 2. So we said these are points. We also call them coordinates. If you look at the far left here, we know that A is negative 5, 3, and B is 4, 2. Now, we said that coordinates are generally represented with respect to the origin. Because if you were to count five places to the left, one, two, three, four, five, and you were to count three places up, you would actually come to point A, which means that point A can be represented as a position vector. Also, a similar concept would be applied to B. If you were to go one, two, three, four places to the right, and one, two places up from the origin, you would end up at point B. So point B can also be represented as a position vector. So let us put in the vectors here and see what happens. So my vector would start here at origin, and it would go to point A. The origin is always represented using O. So I'm going to rename my origin. And similarly, if I'm going from C to B, I would start here at origin and go to B. We don't even have to put the O there because once we come from where these two axes intersect, we automatically know that that is the origin. But just for this particular question, we're going to label it O as the origin. When looking at a coordinate system, if you look at the left here, the coordinate of A is negative 5, 3. The components are the same for the vector, which is OA, which is negative 5, 3. Now notice the difference here is that for a vector, we, pull it, we put it in column form. And a coordinate is written like this with a comma between it. Similarly, for point B, 
that is 4 to as a coordinate and in column form as a vector we have 4 to so you have to know the difference between a coordinate and a vector and to know that all coordinates can be represented as position vectors because all coordinates or all points come with respect to the origin which is right here what we want to do now is to put in the displacement vector that goes from a to b so let us get that vector here it runs from a here up to point b here because we're using a cartesian plane the vector a b which is the resultant vector i can easily count this off to say that i win i'm going one two three four five six seven eight nine nine places to the right and one place down so if you look over here we have nine negative one which is my vector a b that is pretty straightforward but if i were to work this out algebraically i wouldn't i would not have that information so how would i then get from a to b think of a as a tone o as a tone and b as a tone o would be like my central tone because o there's a connection we can go from a to o and then from o to b so it is a central tone that connects these two tones which are a and b so looking at this conceptually i could go from a to o and then from o to b but if i'm going from a to o i'm looking at the negative of the vector o a it's because i'd have changed the direction here i would have negated the direction so when doing this calculation there are two ways i can look at it i could probably think of it as a o plus o b or i could think of it as me subtracting the vector o a from b from o b Right. So follow the arrows. So I'd have to go from A to O. So notice the arrow here would have to be reversed if I'm looking at it from an algebraic perspective. Let us look at the algebra side of things. We had on a Cartesian plane, we had put two coordinates, A, negative 5, 3, and B, 4, 2. So these are my coordinates. We said because all coordinates are taken with respect to the origin, all coordinates can be represented as position vectors. So, because we have point A here as negative 5, 3, the position vector of A would be represented as OA. Please remember to put the vector above it, which means I'm going from O to A. This would be equal to negative 5, 3. Similarly for B, the position vector of B would be OB, which would be equal to 4, 2. Now, as we were looking, we were looking at the displacement vector, AB, and we we're saying that since we have OA and OB, we could think of O as a central tone because we're going from O to A, we're going from O to B. But what I really want to do is to get from A to point B. So if O is a central tone, I would have to go from A to O, and then I could go from O to B. How do I look at this? Since I have from O to A, and now I now need to go from A to O, I'm looking at the negative vector because I would have changed the direction. So here, I would actually end up with the negative of OA plus OB, which remains the same. So let us change this vector now to reflect that. So in this case, I'm gonna end up with, if I negate, OA, I'm going to end up with 5, negative 3, plus OB, which remains the same, is 4, 2. So when I add these, bear in mind when we add vectors, we add the corresponding components. So I'm going to have 5 plus 4, that's 9, and negative 3 plus 2, that's negative 1. So we can say, therefore, the vector AB is equal to 9, negative 1. 